Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. And you join me this afternoon on a, what is essentially a very wet afternoon here in the UK. Now, if you ever do plan on coming to the UK, try and make it earlier than July or later than September. You are usually in for better weather. Um, July and August can be a little bit of a mixed bag, certainly August here, so something to bear in mind. But anyway, you're not here for me to talk about weather or holiday recommendations, or you may be. <laughs> anyway, what you really are here for, hopefully, is the comparison between these three pens. Now, I'm gonna throw up some size comparisons straight away for these pens so that you can see these, and then I will also put some ink uh, capacities on here as well so you can see that. Okay so let's start off with the uh, caramel version here. Actually before we do go that on with that let's just introduce these pens from left to right. We've got the Leonardo Officina Italiana Messenger in caramel, then we've got the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero in Blue Hawaii and then lastly we have got the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in Arco Brown. And apologies for those OCD people out there I didn't put the Pack on properly because why? My video stopped again halfway through recording. This is the third time today that I've actually had to charge up the camera to redo this video. So hopefully my batteries aren't uh, decaying because that will be quite expensive and battery money really isn't something I want to be spending money on. I want to be buying pens and inks and paper, not uh, batteries for my camera. Still, it's all necessary for hopefully giving you some nice 4K footage. Anyway, Enough uh, ranting and raving, let's crack on. Okay, so we've got the messenger here in this caramel finish, and it is absolutely stunning. Turning the pen, you can see lots of chatoyance going on throughout the body and the cap. But let's start from the top and then work our way down. <coughs> right, from the top, we've got a slightly domed top coming to a very contemporary and controversial clip. Uh, some people really don't like this. I guess you could call this the Marmite Eclipse. For myself, I love it. I think it matches the silver ring, which is where, where we're gonna go to next. We've got the words Leonardo on the front, uh, which is Leonardo's signature, I do believe. Made in Italy, and then we've got the limited edition number on the back. Okay, let's take off the cap. Underneath, we've got a fine Yovo nib with a plastic feed. Comes to a nice uh, little section which tapers down to some metal threads. They don't dig into your hands. Very, very comfortable. Okay, let's take the barrel off. Underneath we've got a Schmidt converter, I do believe. Holds about a milliliter of ink. And again, I'll throw up uh, some of those uh, comparisons, just as a reminder. And a plastic turning knob on the bottom. From that, we come on to the actual main section which then tapers up to the barrel. So quite interestingly this section is in two here on the pen and then it comes down and it slightly tapers down to a domed bottom as well. Next up we have in comparison uh, is our Leonardo Opportuna Italiana Memento Zero in Blue Hawaii and starting from the top and working our way back down to the bottom we have got a dome top which is very nice and it comes to a point very nice. Italian style roller clip, very beautiful, very practical. I do like that little roller ball. And it's the same actually on most of Leonardo's pens. This one is an exception. And to be honest, they both work perfectly functionally. And so moving down, we've got three silver rings. Comes down to a little bit more of that lovely resin. Take the cap off. The fourth ring, which appears to be on the same section, isn't, it's actually on the barrel or the body. So again, very, very beautiful. And then let's have a look at the section. So we've got a medium book nib uh, on the top of the section with a plastic feed. Let's undo the barrel. Underneath, again, we've got an international converter, so cartridge converter, I should say, with the words of Leonardo on there. Very beautiful. Holds about, I think, 1.2 millilitres of ink. That's the cartridge, but again, I'll throw that up and apologies if I'm incorrect. Okay, coming down onto the main barrel, we have got uh, Leonardo Opportuna Italiana with the numbered edition, and then it comes down to another silver ring, which separates that from the blind cap, which I can take off, and then underneath, you have got the standard piston uh, turning up on the bottom. All very, very nice. Okay, 
Well, let's just talk about the material on this because out of the three, I would say this is almost my favorite, believe it or not. Uh, let's, I'm not gonna get this lined up. I am gonna get this lined up. Gosh, I have to have more faith in myself. What I love about this uh, Blue Hawaii material is just this pure depth to it. It's got so many different layers in this material. And as you can see, as I just move this around, you can see all those sort of layers just nicely stacking up in stripes. And I think that actually almost gives it a faceted look, which is a model which will be coming out hopefully later this year from Leonardo. So, very, very beautiful indeed. Okay, so that's the Memento Zero. Uh, let's move on to the Grande. Okay, so to finalize, We've got the Grande version, which is done as a custom pen. So thank you again, Salvatore. And if you are interested in seeing the review on this pen or any of the others, I will put them as a link into the description below for you to look at at the end of this video. Or if you get bored, you can go and look at them now. So let's uh, start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. Okay, we've got a dome top, which is quite similar in looks to the uh, Messenger. Very, very beautiful. Comes to an Italian style roller clip. Very similar again to the Memento Zero. If I hold them up um, side by side, the Grande version is a hair longer by about a millimeter. About, well, yeah, about one millimeter. Uh, both have got balls on there. Uh, the uh, actual clip is more slender than that of the Memento Zero, with the Memento Zero being slightly uh, more bulbous. Okay, coming down, we've got three rings. We've got two thinner rings with a center ring, which is thicker. That was something which I did specify for this pen. The regular version of the Memento Zero Grande does come with uh, three rings, which is, again, very similar to the regular Memento Zero. But I wanted to have something which really differentiated this pen from the rest of the actual Arco brown materials, which I've seen floating about on Instagram. So this one just makes it look a little bit more different, I hope. Uh, so let's just take off the cap. Now the actual ring on here first appeared on the Spinanza. I really wanted to get a Spinanza, but I didn't have the money at the time. And when I did have the money, I really wanted to get this material. So it was a, a sort of a toss up between the two. Right, so underneath the hood, we have got a fine elastic gold nib. And I believe it's made by Bock. I could be incorrect, but I believe it's made by Bock. And uh, I've got an Ebonite feed. Very, very nice. And then coming down, we've got a tapered section coming to some brass rings, which has patinas a little bit. And I think it adds to the aging of the pen, which looks really, really nice. Comes to the beautiful Arco material, which is on the body itself. Raises it up ever so slightly and then comes down as we come towards the piston knob. Okay, so on the bottom, we have got another Spinanza ring, followed by the piston knob. All very nice. Okay, so that is it in a nutshell. Let's just talk about these in comparison very quickly before we do go on. Um, let's talk about the price of these pens to start with. Okay, so I'm not gonna say what the price of this one is, purely because uh, it was a custom made pen and the price of the material will vary uh, depending on where you get it. So the Messenger retails for around about 133 pounds. Uh, dependent on where you buy it from. It's not actually readily available from any pen shop in the UK. You can get it on Amazon, and I do believe it comes from a store in Italy, or it's fulfilled by a store in Italy. Uh, next up, we have got the Momentum Series, which retails for about £155, and then the Grande version, uh, in the regular versions, retail for about £260. And the, oh, we'll talk about this, sort of, sort of like the price points and whether it's worth it um, after the, the writing sample. So join me over in the writing sample and uh, we'll have a look at how these pens perform. Okay, so what we're gonna do today, we're going to do a three uh, writing samples from each of these pens. We'll do a smear test and then we'll talk about how these uh, pens perform after. Okay, so we'll start off with the Caramel uh, Messenger and see how that actually performs. Okay, so I'm having to do this at a slightly awkward angle due to the, the filming of this. I do hope to get a boom arm or an extension arm so I can actually write at a more normal writing angle at some stage. But anyway, let's uh, start off by doing the quick round fox.
Now the paper which I'm using today is Tomoe River and it's very thin so because this is quite a humid day my hands are sticking to this a little bit uh, so I do apologize if the page isn't sticking down. I could probably actually weigh it down but let's just get on with this video because I've, this is about the fourth time I've tried to uh, do this today so let's get this done. So quick brown forks jumps over the Have a lazy dog. Okay, so we're going to write out the ink next, which is Pelican Edelstein Tanzanite. Hope I spelled that correct. Oh, come on. My cursive handwriting is terrible, I do apologise, but it's something which I'm slowly trying to uh, improve. For many years I was writing in block capitals and this is something which I'm really wanting to try and rectify. But anyway, I digress, let's just do some line samples. And you can squeeze out a good, decent, medium size line with this. So, horizontal, some diagonal lines, all very good. Okay, I'm going to do a quick smear test now. I'll just do this off to the side. Actually, before I do a smear test, let's just do some swirls. And then just underneath that, we'll do a square. You can see how this ink performs. I love this tanzanite. And on this Tomoe River paper, which is of 52 GSM, under certain lights, you can get some bronzing to this ink, which is really, really nice. Okay, so uh, actually let's do it underneath. So do one pass, eh, two passes. Let's just do that underneath. I would normally give it a bit more space, but I want to try and conserve this paper. So yeah, it's a bit wetter with two passes. Um, it's not the wettest pen in the world. It is a Yovo nib and they are traditionally a little bit drier than Bok nibs, but they are also a bit more reliable. So let's move on to my Memento Zero. All right, let's, uh, before I do that, some people like to have what the actual nib is. So we're gonna just write in Joe, fine. And I'm just going to write down S to designate that it's a steel nib. Okay, so next up we have got the Memento Zero. And as I get down the page, I do tend to find it's a little bit easier to write. Okay, and then in here we have got tire mine. Royal blue. Okay, and next off we'll do some line variations. So that's regular. You can squeeze it out to a bit of a broad line. And as you can see, it's slightly thinner on the uh, horizontal strokes. Absolutely no problems. Do some
for some reason, sometimes I always um, start off with issues with just doing those sort of first wheels, but let's just do one with some pressure. As you can see, we can squeeze out pressure with this nib, which is always very nice. They are known to be a bit more springy, these uh, bop nibs than Yovo comparisons. Okay, let's just do a quick square. If I've got room to do the next one, ah, uh, pen on this page. So, yeah, very nice. And as you can see on this page, this uh, Dimeline Royal Blue really does shade quite nicely. So let's just do one pass. Yeah, that's wet. <laughs> and then we'll do two passes. Yeah, about the same actually. Um, it does depend uh, quite often on how quickly I lay down the ink. Okay, and this is a bock. Medium. Very nice. I do like brushing with this pen. It does make me happy. Okay, and then lastly, but not least, we have got, I'm going to sort of go around this a little bit, but we've got the Grande version here. The Okay, so we'll just do our tests on this side. We've also got Diamine Royal Blue in here as well, but it's working slightly differently uh, in this pen. Okay, normally I'd have enough space to just do the comparisons, but Three pens is probably one more comparison than I'm used to doing on a small A5 pad. Okay, let's just do some line variations. I'm expecting something decent out of this because this is being an elastic nib. So that's under regular pressure. A little bit of pressure, a bit more pressure, a lot more pressure. And that's about as much as I'm going to go because I am slightly hitting the feed there. Okay, let's just do some figures of eight. I'm just going to do those with the pressure so you can see what you're getting. I am very tempted to get this nib worked on, uh, just purely to get a little bit more flex out of the nib. I do want a bit more expression and I also like to have the nib a slightly finer. As you can see between the medium uh, bock nib and this uh, fine nib being 14K, I'll just write this down, so elastic nib. Oops, can't spell today. <laughs> that is an N, okay, uh, and it's 14K. Okay, ran out of a little bit of juice there. Uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see, there isn't really a huge difference between these two pens in terms of uh, the actual characteristics of the line. Um, is the elastic nib worth it? Yes, I will leave that down to your own preference. I, for myself, I would like it um, finer, so there's more expression between the thinness and the uh, thick lines. But what this does actually really excel with, this nib, is the fact that it does spring back really quickly, uh, unlike um, a lot of other modern nibs, which can have issues with that. So that's it for the writing sample. Let's move on to actually who these pens are for and the overview. Okay, right, I do apologize about my handwriting. It's not the best in the world but um, I hope it was legible enough for you to be able to see how these pens perform. Okay, so who are these pens for? Well, obviously this is very much down to your own budget. At the end of the day, what are you after for a fountain pen? Well, let's just put these pens down for a second. I'm not going to rant on too long about this, but fountain pens are a luxury. 
There's no two ways about it. It is a luxury item at the end of the day. Um, as an artist, I can sort of warrant spending the money on them just purely because it does give me the expression all lines. And I'm sure if you're a writer or someone who loves writing letters to people, that is how you probably justify it as well. But could you write a letter with a ballpoint or a roller ball, which costs you maybe a pound? Of course you could. Does it give you the same pleasure in writing? No, it doesn't. So let's just uh, talk about how pleasurable these items are. I love this little Yovo nib on this uh, pen. Okay, the actual resin material is Taiwanese, I believe. It's not actually Italian, but does that bother me? No, it's beautiful. I mean, does it really matter where the re resin comes from? To me, no, not really. It makes no difference. I mean, Jonathan Brooks, American company, you know, he makes absolutely gorgeous materials. And on the, the recent uh, limited edition runs from Leonardo, his uh, materials are featured. And you know, it's been a fantastic collaboration. So it doesn't really matter where the materials come from. I know there might be some snobbery in terms of uh, perhaps Italian acrylics are more desirable, but I would argue that. I think there's uh, certainly pen manufacturers around the world which come up with absolutely beautiful materials. Even here in the UK, Conway Stewart makes uh, some fantastic materials when they're in production. So yes, I mean, going back to this pen, it's an absolutely gorgeous pen. It writes perfectly fine. You know, it's going to be for anyone who wants to get into Leonardo pens on a budget, as long as these are still available. So, moving on to this. You can actually get the uh, Memento Zeros for not too much. You can get them for about £134 from Izzards in the UK. And you can even get them on Amazon for about the same price as well, dependent on the year which you're looking for. The more modern ones, you're looking around about £159. And you can get these from Europe as well. So places like Penventure or Stilographica, uh, Corsani and uh, Fonte Plumo or Applebaum. Um, you know, you can get these in a number of places. Oddly, Leonardo isn't particularly well represented in the UK. You, in America it is, in Holland it is, in Germany it is, in France I believe there's uh, some companies which um, sell the pens, but for some reason the UK is not getting much love. So. Um, any UK distributors out there, please, uh, or pen shops, because these aren't actually distributed, please do stock um, some Leonardo pens because after Brexit, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to buy pens without having to pay for import tax. So um, that's something to consider for the future. Okay, so let's talk about this pen. Uh, yep, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful material. Is it worth it for me? Yes, because I bought it. Uh, so it's always going to be worth it for me. For you, that is your own decision. You know, at the end of the day, we all got different budgets. You know, some people can't afford to buy into pens like this. For some people, this might be peanuts. But at the end of the day, does it provide a good writing experience? And the answer is yes. Lastly, the Grande version. Well, this is going to be for someone who maybe wants to have a bigger pen. And I was correctly corrected. Uh, by saying that if anyone's got arthritis, a bigger pen would be uh, more preferable. Um, so, also, if you're after a larger thinning mechanism, the Memento Zero Grande will offer you that. I believe you can get a nice generous 1.5 millilitres of ink in the Grande model, which is always very nice, and it means that you can write for longer sessions. Um, the only thing I would say would be quite nice uh, would be to have an ink window. I know it might not be necessarily uh, Chiro's or Salvatore's uh, desire to add something like that, but I personally do like ink windows, so maybe an option to have that in the future would be quite, uh, quite nice and welcomed. Okay, so that's it really in a nutshell. I hope that's provided uh, a, a useful sort of comparison between them. If there's anything which I have missed out or if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing a flex off uh, between the Leonardo Officina Italiano Memento Zero Grande and my Santini Libra. And we'll see who reigns king.